Hi and welcome back. In this video, we're going to talk about launching multiple processes. So you can launch multiple processes with Python. You can have your main Python process that gets created when you launch your Python app. And you can ask your Python code to launch another process. When you do that, each process can have its own thread running in two separate cores. Okay, so the two processes will be entirely separate from one another. As part of doing that, it can also set up communication between the processes. And that communication is slow, but it can allow us to run two things actually at once in two separate cores. It's not entirely that simple. Let's have a look at some code. Okay, I'm going to copy some things from the earlier uh, section here. Oh, sorry, let's, um, let's copy from here. So I'm going to copy all of this and I'm going to delete the thread code in here. And I'm going to delete that. So what we've got are our two functions, ask user and complex calculation. Once again, we've got our timing functions that we're going to ask the user first, run the complex calculation second and print out how long that took. If you want to have multiple processes, you can do that. All you have to do is say from multiprocessing, import process. Now you have the process class from the multiprocessing module, and you can use that to launch a new process. Let's do it. We're going to say the new process is process target is complex calculation. So that's going to be the target of this process. And then we're going to say process.start. We're going to say start equal time dot time. We're going to ask the user for something. We're going to wait for the process to finish running. And then we're going to print, you know, to process total time is time dot time minus start. Okay. Very similar to what you would expect from the thread code processes. You've got your new process, you give it a target, you start it, and then when you want it to wait until it finishes, you do dot join, and that's it. Okay, very straightforward. Let's run it and see what happens. Let's right click the processes file and run it. Ask me for my name first, then it starts calculating. And then it's going to ask me for my name again. And notice how that's sort of screwed up. That that didn't look so good there. Yeah. And again, it takes in. It took me a bit longer to type in my name now because um, this was a bit messed up. But it took the same amount of time as the multi-threaded code. You know, some would say it takes a little bit longer. It probably does take a little bit longer because creating a new process is a bit more expensive than creating a new thread. But generally, you know, it works. Yeah. This thing here, though, enter your name, colon, started calculating, dot, 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 is a symptom of the problem. And the problem, we're going to see it when we try to do something else, which is now I'm going to create another process for my ask user function. So process two is going to be process and the target is going to be ask target is ask the user function. Then we're going to start process one, we're going to start process two. We're not going to ask the user anymore in the main process, we have now two processes for that, and we can do process two dot join. Okay, same thing as before, we create our processes, we start them, we start the timer, now we wait for them to finish. But you'll see that this won't work so easily. Let's run this again. Go at the single threaded code first. Starts calculating and then it's gonna when it finishes, it's gonna launch my two processes. But alas, we get an error. And sometime after, we'll get the complex calculation finish. So here the problem is that we get an EOF when reading a line, end of file when reading a line. Our process could not run this input function. And the reason the process could not run this input function is because it doesn't have access to this terminal here. Remember the processes cannot share resources very easily. So it doesn't know where we're meant to be reading from 
when we tell it to finish by doing process two don't join, it says, okay, you didn't type anything. There was there was uh, there was nothing. There's no no way for me to get the input, and also there's no way for me to type it. So, um, you know, finish the process, and you get uh, an error there. There's no place for me to type the input because it doesn't have access to this this thing that I was about to type. And so the, a bit of a strange problem there, but this is the reason why earlier on you got your two lines in the same line. They were accessing the console simultaneously, but it was essentially a separate, sorry, a separate uh, entity. And so a bit of a complicated thing, using processes is not easy, okay? Because they are separate, you start getting sort of separate resources, sometimes duplicate resources, Some, one of them doesn't have access to something, the other one does, and so you know, not terribly easy uh, to use processes. Normally, you'll use processes if you have a multi-core machine, like my laptop is, and you want to do complex calculations on both. So if you want to do that, you can do that. You can run the complex calculation on both machines. Now you won't get this error. Let's run this again. And let's see what happens. This is the single threaded code, by the way, it took 6.47 seconds, then we started calculating twice. And now we're hoping the operating system has given us two cores to run this in, and it seems like it did. And now the two complex calculations ran in a longer amount of time, close to seven seconds now, instead of 6.47. But they ran both at the same time. This is why you use multiprocessing, when you need two things to run at the same time in the CPU. If your problem is you have things that are waiting, like this uh, user input here, you don't need multiprocessing. What you need is multi-threading, and you want to, you know, have cooperative multitasking between the two threads. So this is multiprocessing. Just wanted to show you quickly when to use it and when not to use it. And we're going to be encountering a couple more scenarios of where we'll, we'll, we will want to use this later on in the course. So that's it for this video. I'll see you on the next one.